Considered to be one of the greatest games of all time, Barbie the video game is certainly one of the best. Revolves around dreams. <laughs> A little something different for this week, Retro fans. Welcome to Guru Larry's Retro Corner Halloween two-part special. <laughs> this week we'll be showing you two horror movie classics brought to the NES in their ghoulish glory. First up, the knife-wielding madman himself, Jason Voorhees in Friday the 13th. Released by LJN in 1989, the game is a loose amalgamation of the first four movies where you have to save your fellow comrades from the evils at Hook Crystal Lake. Which includes some of those well-known monsters, Zombie Lady, Oversized Wolves, and Birds. Obviously Alfred Hitchcock was one of the developers or something, I don't know. But they are evil birds. Trust me, they are. Also, entering a cabin in the hunt to finish Jason turns a game into a kind of third-person perspective that graphically rivals the likes of Gears of War. While the game isn't exactly a classic, classic as in it was critically planned for being so poor, LJN dusted themselves down after the kicking and tried their hand at another well-known horror license two years later with A Nightmare on Elm Street. Based mostly on the third and fourth movies, A Nightmare on Elm Street sees you playing as this random chap who has a habit of punching spiders and snakes in the face. Real hard man. The object of the game is to collect Freddy's bones, all the bones belonging to his dog. It's just not that accurate in the instruction book. And finishing him off once and for all until he returns in some loose fitting plot in the sequel. Oh no! Freddy's trademark coming! Quite unique for its time was the ability to play four players simultaneously. Unfortunately, I couldn't bribe anyone to play it with me, so there's no footage of that. There's no real ending for these games, as these villains always manage to come back somehow. But thankfully, they never resurrected a sequel for these monstrosities of gaming. Unlike next week's Gultastic Retro Corner, where we'll once again be delving into the bowels of gaming grossness. See you next week, retro fans. Don't have nightmares. <laughs> Welcome once again to the second part of our Retro Corner Halloween special. Last week we tortured your eyeballs in the horrors of a Friday the 13th and a Nightmare on Elm Street. But this time we're going to freak you out of this PlayStation classic that kicked off the survival horror genre, which we're still feeling echoes off to this day. <laughs> Resident Evil. Set in a way off future of 1998, Resident mansion. Evil takes place in an old mansion outside the infamous Raccoon City. You're a member of STARS, an elite team who are sent in to aid a Bravo team, who mysteriously disappeared on the trail of a series of gruesome murders in the area. The game features some of the cream of Hollywood acting talent, especially this guy who's really menacing. Grrr. Albert Wesker. This guy who's really cool, and uh, Anthony Worrell Thompson. You'll playable heroes for this gruesome fable of the luscious Jill Valentine and that man's man that is Chris Redfield. Resident Evil. Each character had their own difficulty level. Whilst Jill could be saved by her celebrity chef friend, Chris was able to carry more items as well as being able to take more damage. Resident Evil is notoriously known for its incredibly cheesy dialogue, but that all adds to the B-movie feel of the game. Whether this was intentional or not, we'll never know. What is it? Blood. It might be handy if you, the master of unlocking, take it with you. That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. Originally a sleeper hit, the game soon managed to make the big time. One of the reasons for this was a huge hype surrounding the game's first sequel, Resident Evil 2, which is still the biggest selling Resident Evil game to date. 
The Resident Evil series has since become one of the leading franchises in the video gaming industry. With other titles such as Alone in the Dark and the Silent Hill series getting close, but never achieving the same amount of success. So what happened to the Resident Evil characters? Jill Valentine. Well, Jill went on to meet the nemesis in Resident Evil 3. Chris Redfield. Manly man Chris went on to meet up with his sister in Code Veronica. And Barry went on to become a celebrity chef, releasing a line of top quality kitchenware, which is currently available on several TV shopping channels. So that's it for our All Hallows Eve spooktaculars. Don't eat too much candy, or you'll end up looking like this guy. <laughs> I took a throat pastel this time. This has been a Portland Interactive production for XLeague.tv.